Hey guys, welcome to Made by Synstatic. It's Abby here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a DIY bodycon dress. Now I made this particular bodycon dress with a halter style neckline, but you can literally make any kind of neckline you want because the basic formula for making a bodysuit is always the same. You will need about a metre and a half of some medium weight stretch fabric so the fabric can hold your curves but also keep its structure. I managed to sew this entire project by hand when my sewing machine was broken, so if you don't have a sewing machine, this is definitely something you can do. There's only about four steps of sewing, um, including the hems, so let's get started. For this tutorial, you will need about a metre and a half of fabric, some paper, a pen, a measuring tape, something to cut with, and you can use a sewing machine and whatever you need to sew with, whether that's a needle on thread or a sewing machine. To make this dress, we're going to need a series of measurements, which you can see on the diagram here. You're also going to need the distances vertically between all these points of measurements. So let's get started. You're going to need to know roughly the distance kind of across the top of your chest where you want the dress to fall. For me, this was around eight inches. Of course, if you want a different neckline for your bodycon dress, feel free to ignore this step. The next thing I measure is the distance from A to the fullest part of my bust. Then the distance from A to my waist, the distance from A to my hips, and the distance from A to my thighs. If you want to make the dress longer than kind of thighs and you want to make it to midi, then carry on measuring the distance from A to another part of your body. Next, I went on to measure my bust. Uh, and this is the whole bust circumference, nice and snug, because after all this is a bodycon dress. Then my waist. Then my hips. And around my thighs. In the end, I didn't use the around my thigh measurement, but if you want to keep the bodycon dress very figure hugging, you do want to measure the distance around your thighs. The final thing I measure is the diagonal distance from the side of the line of A to my underarms and you'll see why in a moment. So let's get to making this pattern. So this is where your measurements come to life. Draw a line down your piece of paper and at the top, create a line of measurement A. Measure the distance from A to your bust and then draw the line B. Then the distance from A to your waist, draw the line C. A to your hips, draw the line D. A to your thighs or to the length of the dress and that will be E. Then you're going to join up all the lines with a smooth curve, except the lines A to B, which you'll join up with a straight line of length F. The whole time you're doing this, I suggest that you actually use your actual measurements as opposed to the letters A, B, C, D, E and F. You'll also want to mark on the vertical distances so that everything's exactly in proportion. You can definitely make a full size pattern if that's what suits you best but I just went with these small mini patterns and went straight on to my fabric. I'm using a lovely, thick, slightly ribbed jersey, which I found at Watney Street Market for about two pounds a meter. As you can see, the ribbing or stripes on my fabric were quite prominent, so I decided to make sure that they were fully lined up and as straight as they could possibly be. To cut out my fabric, I redrew the pattern in full size and I kept the fabric on fold, so I only had to draw out half of my pattern design. I then added one inch of seam allowance along the bottom and half an inch everywhere else. But if you want this to be really, really form fitting, I would just skip the seam allowance and cut out your fabric just as it is. Be sure to pin it so that everything is kept in place nice and neatly. I made sure to pin mine extremely well because I wanted the diagonal, the horizontal lines of my dress fabric to be really really strong and not out of line at all. Your front and back pattern pieces are exactly the same but when you measure your front pattern piece along the line where you put the measurement B you want to measure two inches in and make a dot here. This is your bust apex and you need it for the darts if you're going to add any. So before I got anywhere near cutting my main fabric I actually made a twirl out of some scrap fabric I had. I suggest that you do this too, just to make sure your pattern works and that your dress hugs in all the right places. To construct this dress, you want to lay your front and back pattern pieces right sides together and sew along the side seams. 
you may have noticed that I created little notches. I made the notches on the first life-size pattern piece I cut out and then I traced the second piece of fabric using the first piece of fabric. This means that I can align the notches to make sure that the dress is fully lined up at all times. With the side seam sewn, it becomes really, really evident that you need darts to make this dress work. It also becomes ed evident why you shouldn't add seam allowance to your pattern piece. Because I added seam allowance, my dress was slightly too big, so I had to take it in ever so slightly more. Whereas if I had just not added any seam allowance, it would have been perfect in all the right ways, just like that. Remember the random dots we made earlier on the front pattern piece? Well, those should fall directly over your bust. What you want to do is create a dart by gathering the excess fabric in a triangle with the point of that triangle facing towards that dotted line. You can attempt to mark this and join. Then pin your temporary dart in place. Do this on both sides of your dress. You should end up with something that looks like this. What I did here was create an incision at the point where the fabric overlapped and where I made my chalk markings. And then I opened up the dart and just readjusted it and refined it so that I had nice neat markings which I could transfer to the other side of my dress. This is to make sure that it was symmetrical. Before I show you how to close the dart, I want to show you what a good side of dart looks like and what a bad side of dart looks like. This dress is all about the angles and the symmetry. So what you want to try and do is create a dart that is a straight line across your chest. As you can see on the left side of my dress, there's a slight bend in the angle, so you don't get that smooth, continuous line. Whereas on the right side, it's almost a dead-on straight line, creating a really nice illusion and effect. So to create a dart that didn't lead to a bent line, what I did was fold over the fabric in such a way that the dart was still pointing towards the bust apex dot, but that there was no change in the gradient of the line that created the nice cut-in shoulder effect. Play around with this, it's not as easy as it seems the first time, but eventually you will find a dart that works. As you can see, I'm actually pinning it in quite a funny way. I'm pinning it in such a way that the dart is lying flat. You're not going to be able to sew the dart this way. So what I ended up doing after I positioned the fabric so that the line is straight was I adjusted the pins so that I had a triangle fabric that I could sew as opposed to a triangle that was laid flat against the rest of the fabric. I hope this explanation makes sense, but if it doesn't, I'm sorry. We're literally repeating the same thing on the other side. Here you can see me matching up the notches that I created earlier, just to make sure the dart is symmetrical. And with the second perspective, hopefully it becomes clearer how to make these darts. Now you're going to sew the triangle of the dart. You want to start from the tip of the triangle and work your way outwards. And you can use a machine for this, but because my sewing machine was broken, I hand sewed the entire dress. After adding the darts, this is what my bodycon dress looked like. At this point, you can decide to take in the sides further, but if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and hem your bodycon dress. So what I did was I used my iron to fold over the fabric and give these nice straight edges. Then I pinned these edges into place and then I hand sewed all of these hems down. However, hand sewing and machine sewing aren't your only alternatives. What you can do is use hemming tape. So this is a kind of tape you can get in your local fabric store and all you need for hemming to use hemming tape is an iron and the tape. What you do is that you lay your fabric out how you want it to be. You place the hemming tape on the inside of the fabric. You fold over your hem and then you iron it down. So unless you want a strapless dress, you're going to need to add straps to this dress. And to do this, I literally just guesstimated the length of the strap that I would need and cut the strap to this length. I then hand sewed this onto the inside of the hemmed garment. So this is the finished body dress. Thank you guys so much for watching. What's really, really fun about body dresses is that they can be styled in so many different ways. And this is just the first step to making your first one. I have another plan for making another bodysuit with a different type of neckline, but the basic process is still always going to be the same. 
So grab yourself a stretch fabric and get started. So that is it for today. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up so that other people know that you liked it and so that this video can be shared more amongst the YouTube community. I have loads of projects coming up as you can see on the screen. So if you wanna keep track of what I'm doing, definitely follow my Instagram and hit that subscribe button. Love you guys, so stay blessed.